What's up, Ghost? Jake here with the Moonlit Vlog. We're going to get into it with a shout out to Matt H., uh, my newest nightmare over on Patreon. If you guys aren't a patron, make sure to head on over, sign up. It's going to be worth it. All right, let's get into it. items of business. The first thing I want to do is I want to just really quickly go over what I have in mind for the structure of this channel. For my vlog, which I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Mondays are going to be doing comment responses. I really want to make sure that I'm interacting with you guys and I'm responding to as many comments as possible. The bigger this channel gets, it gets a little bit harder to do that, but I'm going to make a valiant effort. So Mondays, we're going to do comment responses, and we're also going to be updating the moon list. If you don't know what that is, stay tuned for my Monday vlog. It's pretty cool. And then also we're going to be doing creating the moonlit planet. So uh, stay tuned for my Monday vlogs. Wednesdays, which is today, we are doing channel updates. We're doing items of business. We're going to do a quick reaction to something spooky or paranormal, see if we can add it to the moon list. Also, we're going to be doing black fault readings and paranormal news. So stay tuned for this video for what I got in store for that just in a few minutes. Fridays, we're doing live streams. We're doing just live reactions and live Q and A. Anybody who wants to jump in, ask me anything you want and uh, we'll just have a good discussion. So this this Friday, still seven o'clock PM Mountain Standard Time. I'm working on potentially maybe doing a different time schedule depending upon when some of my viewers or most of my viewers can jump on, but I'm still playing that by ear. But for now, 7 PM this Friday, be cathartical and just or a particle of dust. Um, you know, like be there or be square, like, you know, like a particle of dust is like, you know, I'm, I'm working on my t-shirts, just, 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 you know. So that's kind of the idea for my vlog. Then also I've been doing on-site investigations, ghost stories and deep dives. And if you guys are early like subscribers to my channel, you know that I started off doing deep dive, like debunking channels and going really deep into things like that. I wanna just combine all of those into one. So like going to actual places where I, I tell the story of the place and also do the investigation and to see if we can't verify or verify the truth of the story or debunk it. And since we're still pretty small, I'm just focusing on local stories, local things like that but the, the bigger we get with your support and help we can expand out and do more things and the goal is to be able to travel around the world and share these stories because that'd just be so much fun that's the goal for this channel that's my vision that's what i want to do and i couldn't do it without you guys thank you so much and then finally my short i have another channel called the moonlit ghost shorts i'm also calling it the moonlit minute and right now 60 second shorts that tell bizarre strange weird stories anything you name it it's it's fun to watch and you can go over there links in the description binge watch a whole ton of those right after this speaking of my shorts. I'm posting seven brand new shorts this week. I've been posting every day and I set a goal for 200 likes between all seven of those videos. Right now, it's not looking like we're going to hit that goal. We've already posted uh, four videos and we're only we're like at 50 something likes. Like, that's not going to stop me from posting them. I'm going to post at least all the way through the end of this week and then let's push to try to get them liked. If you watch it, you like it, make sure to send it out to your friends and family and let's uh, tell them to like it too. I really want to get to 200. I don't know if we can, but but I'm really gonna try to. It'd be super cool. Let's do it. And uh, if we get to 200, I will continue to post new shorts the following week. If we don't, I, I'll still do the shorts, but I just wanna make sure that I, I know that they're worth my time to make and I wanna make sure that you guys are enjoying them. I want them to be uh, liked. I want you guys to like them. So let's hit that 200 mark goal, guys. All right, guys, I have been working on my Patreon. I've been working on like the tiers and trying to find different perks and things like that. So all current patrons and any who sign up by the end of Saturday this week, you will get your name in the credits of my videos and you will also get invitation to the Discord server that I am creating right now. It's it's not yet ready, but I'm I'm rolling it out. I'm working on it. After the end of day Saturday, different tiers will have different perks, but if you sign up right now and all my current patrons, names in the credit, no matter what tier you're in, and also Discord server. It's gonna be a place to just talk about paranormal experiences, share your personal stories, and just a place to hang out with like-minded people, and it's gonna be super fun. I got a lot of cool things planned for that. And then also kind of riffing off of the Patreon, and you can also become an orb and become a member of the Moonlit Ghost uh, on YouTube. Right down below, below this video, there's a join button button. Just like uh, Emily, you will get this cool loyalty badge and you'll stand out when you are commenting on my videos in live chats and just down in the comments below. And the loyalty badge will upgrade every so often depending upon how long you've been a member. I've had some people say that they don't see the join button. If that's the case, if you 
you're not seeing the join button, hit the link in the description down below. It should just be right there. That link will help you get to the join button. All right, guys, let's dive into this reaction. Let's do, let's do a newer one. Let's just do this one right here. And again, we're not gonna react to the entire video. We're just gonna skip to the very last video. We will do a lot more reactions during the live stream. So be there uh, or be square or, you know, be a uh, cathartical and just or be a particle of dust. Would you guys buy that t-shirt? Like, I don't know. I don't, that probably doesn't even, I'm probably not even saying that word, right? And dead end. Fans of popular YouTube ghost hunter Franco TV have oh. requested many times that- I'm sorry, guys. Like, <sighs> Franco TV, I think so many other people have debunked Franco TV or criticized him because he's like, he like sets things up. So already, I apologize. These are, I'm doing this randomly. So sorry, guys. We're just going to watch this and, and see what he has to offer. Here. Did he make a return visit to investigate the Weeping Angel Cemetery in Florida? It's no surprise that this particular graveyard is so popular amongst Franco TV viewers. He's been there many times and caught some extremely scary paranormal activity. One of the most memorable of these encounters was the sighting of an old lady just roaming the graveyard. Do you need help? Yeah, not doing that. Now, Frank has never claimed that this person was a ghost or anything supernatural, but many of his viewers seem convinced that the odd visitor was in fact some sort of paranormal apparition. This time, Franco TV is back again to explore the ominous, empty Weeping Angels Cemetery late at night. First, he makes his way to the same area where he originally spotted the elderly woman. Things immediately start to get very strange. I got some. So this is a this is a revisiting the site where they saw this creepy woman. Yeah, because I've seen the creepy woman one before, but apparently he's he went back. Stuff on the floor here. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that's creepy. That thing just started moving. Yeah, it's called the wind. And there's no wind. Franco. I wish I had a flag to show you. What the f There's no wind. Hold on, <laughs> you said there's no wind. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that's- I don't know, I don't know if that is wind, but it sounds like in the audio that there's wind. It's creepy. That thing just started moving. What the f There's no wind. Look, look at the leaves. Hold on. <laughs> that yeah, ghost I'm lady just left that. her I don't slippers. Know what that's about. <laughs> Frank finds an abandoned pair of leopard patterned slippers at the exact same spot where the elderly woman had been seated. But that elderly woman is not wearing those leopard slippers. In the previous video. Even creepier, a plastic pot suddenly begins to move on its own. Frank points out that there's no wind or draft that could have made the pot move. And of course, the occurrence is especially bizarre considering the location. But Franco TV continues on and takes a turn down a small hidden dirt road behind the cemetery. Oh, there's more to this. This is when things take a terrifying turn. All right, what do you got? I just got movement. Frank says he hears movement coming from somewhere down the creepy path. When he points his thermal imaging camera towards the sound, he sees a dark figure standing in the middle of the road. A figure that doesn't seem to emanate any body heat on the thermal image. Even creepier, the figure seems to be getting closer and closer. But when Frank turns on his flashlight, there's no one there. When he goes back to his thermal camera, the figure has now disappeared. Who? Could this unexplained figure be? As always, I leave it up to you. I think he has been debunked by a lot of other people. And I, <laughs> the slippers, the, the, the granny slippers sitting there, that kind of is just too hokey to me. <laughs> like, like no ghost is gonna like spend the energy to manifest and, and then leave their slippers uh, in the real world. Uh, if that was positive, it wasn't a ghost. Uh, it, it was either a random stranger or it was an actor, Franco 
paid to sit there and look creepy. I, I really, you know, he may have gotten away with it if it was just a granny video, like there was just some random granny in the in the cemetery in the middle of the night, just like mourning the loss of like all of her loved ones or something like that. And she's just kind of like losing it, which would be horrifying, which would be very scary if you were there and that really actually did happen. But the fact that he went back and there were like granny slippers there where she was sitting, that's too that's too much like that is just a, <laughs> he put those slippers there i am sure of it and then this guy on the thermal camera uh i i don't know i i'm not debunking this like completely right now this is everything franco tv puts out is like a two for me unless he does something gets a little bit more credible uh it's all like a two for me so not going on the list all right guys we're gonna get on to paranormal news and uh, i don't have a lot of paranormal news right now so i'm just gonna talk about uh haunting the haunting of hill house if you have not seen this this show it's on netflix right now came out in 2018 if you haven't seen it go watch it right now it is one of the it is one of the better paranormal shows I've seen in a long time. The storyline is great. Uh, without spoilers, I mean, it's been like, it's been since 2018. So if you're getting spoiled right now, shame on you. But I just wanted to talk about it because I recently binged it. And uh, the actors uh, on point, Victoria Pedretti, the one of the, the, the one of the primary characters in the show, just blows it out of the water. But like, I, nobody else is following like in her wake. Like they all are just powerhouses. It's, it's about this family who grew up in like a haunted house. And then it's about like, it, it flashes back to like them as children and it flashes forward to them as adults, all trying to live with this, the, the repercussions of, of their crazy youth, of their crazy childhood in this crazy weird haunted house. And I, I highly recommend, Timothy Hutton is in it. He does such, oh, I, I love anything with Timothy, Timothy Hutton in it, but he's the he's the father of the older, o older children and Henry Thomas. I, I'm not so familiar with Henry Thomas, but they all kill it. It's so good. Storyline is amazing. This is what I will have to say. So the buildup of all of the episodes, the storyline, the arc, all the characters, so good but like the very end to me it could have been cleaned up a little bit it could have been a little bit smoother but that's not no fault of the show itself that's how it is with like any paranormal any haunting show like the build-up the tense the, the the drama is always usually pretty good not all but a lot of them and then because it's like a paranormal thing there's not a whole lot of great options of how to end the show because like if you reveal the mystery then it gets really weird it gets really hokey. How do you ha actually have closure with like a ghost story? Because what actually happens to ghosts? People are just guessing and at that point it's just whoever's writing the show and then it gets weird. And then it can get really weird uh, really easily. And unfortunately, I think that happens a little bit, but overall, like the build up to it, it's so good. I'm trying not to give spoilers, but go ahead. It's on Netflix, go binge it. It's one of the best better paranormal shows I've seen in a long time. Also, the filmography of this show is just, it's mind boggling. In one of their episodes, they do a long take where they transition between the, the young family and the older family and they just, it's just a masterpiece in my opinion. When people, filmmakers and storytellers take the time and put the nuance into thinking about how to make this artistic and creative, it's one of the reasons why I love film. I'm not a big film critic, but when they do stuff like that and they do that in this show, I, I'm all about it. That brings me into season two, which they did, came out in 2020, The Haunting of Bly Manor. And I, I was super excited to watch it. Same creator, Mike Flanagan, and a lot of the same actors. So. It's it's like, oh, I was blown away by season one. It's not really season one, season two. They're standalone seasons, standalone series. They're both different. They don't have any crossover. I think they're in completely different universes, but it's the same creator, same actors. So I was super excited about it. And I am just gonna give my honest opinion about it. It was, it was not good. Everything that I liked about The Haunting of Hill House just was not there. And I don't know why, I don't know how that could have happened. I think a lot of it had to do with some of the actors were having to force 
coarse, weird accents. And the storyline was just hectic. It was just back and forth. There were too many moving parts and it was very, the the, the ending was very unfulfilling. Uh, so, so, so feel free to go watch that one as well, but I definitely, you're not missing much if you, if you don't watch Bly Manor, which gets me into my final point. People have been speculating and wanting and hoping uh, for a season three. Screen Rat talked with Mike Flanagan about the possibilities of that happening. And he just said, it doesn't appear that they're currently like really working on it, but he basically gave a set of conditions. One of the things that he really needs is to find the right story, is to find the right book, because both The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor are both based off of previous literature. And obviously he wants to do something in the same vein as what he's done before to keep up this kind of anthology series. It would have to be the right ghost centric story and it would have to be, it would have to really fit with the Bly and Hill House. So unfortunately it's not currently in the works. I really wanna see a season three because I, I just want something to get that bad taste of Bly Manor out of my mouth. In my opinion, it would be hard to do worse than Bly Manor. If if you guys take my suggestion and you watch Haunting of Hill House, let me know in the comments whether you, or if you've seen it already, let me know if you liked it. And also same with Bly Manor. Bly Manor is one of the worst scary shows I have ever seen. It's just the contrast kind of blew me away. So that's why I would love a season three. And finally guys, this news section, it's gonna be filling this news section with, with current things happening in the paranormal world. I've got a lot of good sources. It's just right now, I'm still getting it all together. We're gonna be, I'm gonna be talking about present day, current things happening with Bigfoot, ghosts and aliens. And I have a lot of cool sources and news outlets that I'm gonna bring into this section for paranormal news. But right now you just get my really quick review about Haunting of Hill House and Blind Manor. All right, Black Vault reading, here we go. So previously we read about how Dr. Leon Davis said there was a space message and then these other guys are trying to convince him that it's just Morse code from a space station, but Leon Davidson is, Dr. Leon Davidson is not having it. Let's, so this is apparently a follow up to that. And it looks like this uh, correspondence goes on a little further past this, but we're just gonna read this one right now. Dr. Leon Davidson is on our backs again. <laughs> he wants, he wants the truth is what he wants. Subsequently learned that Davidson made inquiries there. Apparently they stalled him. These guys are not, these guys do not like Leon Davidson. He is trying to find out the truth. I, I'm, I'm imagining, imagining, I'm imagining uh, Fox Mulder uh, running around trying to get the truth on this thing, but they're trying to stop him and they're trying, and this is real, this is crazy. Apparently that was Project, uh, he's referring to Project Blue Book. If you don't know what Project Blue Book is, go ahead and go ahead and Wikipedia that. It's, it's a really uh, incredible story. All right, and this is another one uh, following off of that. I think this one this one takes place after Fox Mulder. I mean, Leon Davidson is, is searching for the truth. We are sending you by Buckslip, a copy of Davidson's latest publication on space saucers entitled The Air Force and the Saucers, part three. The Central Intelligence Agency becomes involved with saucers. So, <laughs> It sounds like, sounds like something Fox Mulder would do. Please note, visit to the CIA office in Chicago. In, in this section, Davidson did not withhold somebody's name because somebody asked him to, but because he didn't remember it well enough to risk misspelling. That's weird. See the address See the address clipped from the outer envelope. The soundproofed conference room was a convenient conference room on his first floor of the courthouse used by any court people who visit to go in there. In fact, promise to get the code translation and the identification of the transmitter for Davidson, if possible, and in any event to give him some response within a week or so, did not ask Davidson to keep secret the Chicago CIA location but advised Davidson not to use CIA letterhead in his forthcoming article being forwarded under Buckslip without first clearing with CIA authorities in Washington. The matter of CIA's Chicago location never came up and this is sheer drama aimed at magazine story appeal. <laughs> oh man, in our telephone conversation on January 5th, 1958, Davidson advised that his next article, presumably the one we are forwarding you, was in the hands of Pentagon. Let me zoom in on this. This is hard to read. Hands of Pentagon review people 
possibly then this article is not yet on this press. In any event, again, we urge that in light, is that in light of the fact that Davidson something something has been dealing with CIA, he put, he got, he, he did put in touch with somebody for further interminable business and we are relieved of this chore. Man, oh man, they do not like Dr. Leon Davis, man. This guy is, is hounding them. I, so right now I can't tell if, if Leon Davis is just being really annoying and they're trying to get rid of him or he's uh, onto something and they're trying to get rid of him. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've had a blast doing this. Keep in touch, subscribe if you haven't, like and subscribe. I couldn't do this without my patrons and those who support me, especially uh, my poltergeists. I couldn't do it without my bogarts, without my nightmares, or last but not least, without my creepy shadows. Thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon. And if you want to get your name in the credits, and if you want access to my Discord, sign up for my Patreon right now. That's patreon.com slash moonlitghost. Uh, I'd love to have you on board. If you sign up before the end of Saturday, any tier, doesn't matter what tier you're in, you're gonna get access to the Moonlit Ghost Discord server, which I'm still working on. And also you're gonna get your names in the credits right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and after you've signed up for Patreon, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, hit the bell notification and binge watch all my shorts right there. If you haven't already, comment down below Bob Lazar and get shouted out my live stream Friday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Stay paranormal.